We've come to Heron Island to visit the University of Queensland's research station, where there's a fascinating study being done on the impacts of climate change on coral reefs. It's a fantastic example that shows quite clearly what damage climate change holds in store for the Great Barrier Reef. This is Heron Island Research Station. It's part of the University of Queensland. It's a terrific little spot to do research because we're so close to the reef. It's about 100 metres just out that way. And so we can bring it back. We can do our research here on the coral deck. And then we've got our lab right next door. So it's literally just a step out of your lab and you're onto your research zone, which is great. Our lab is the Coral Reef Ecosystems Lab. And at the moment we're running a climate change scenario where we have a setup to look at the various different climatic changes that might occur in the future. So we have various scenarios. We have our control scenario. So that one is today's conditions, which we are controlling through temperatures and PCO2s that were observed this time last year. PCO2 is the amount of carbon that's in the water. So with climate change, you've got increasing carbon in the atmosphere, which then permeates into the water and that reduces the acidity of the water. So it's actually making the oceans more acidic. So what we've done here is tried to replicate a reef system. So we're not looking at individuals and we're not looking at just coral. We're trying to look at the ecosystem as a whole. So in here we've got several different species of hard coral. Those are the ones that are able to produce calcium carbonate. So you can see in the controls, they look quite happy. Mm -hmm. Healthy, they're growing, they've got nice colour to them. Everything is pretty happy. If we look at one of the pre-industrials, so that one is going back about 100 years with reduced temperature and reduced carbon emissions, so we've got um, less acidity in the water for these ones, some current day treatments. It is a little bit different. Um, you can see that everything is still happy and we've got a lot of colour to it. You can see the plating coral here is coming along beautifully. It's amazing the growth, we've had growth of over 300%. So every single tank we set up identically. Right. So we pick the same species and we put them in the same locations. So it's pretty amazing what we've been happening in these tanks, which is really good. Here we have a glimpse into the future. So this is our do something scenario. So here we've increased temperature by two degrees and we've reduced the pH to about 7.9, so 200 parts per million. So if we have a look inside, we can see what might happen. Now at first glance, it really doesn't look very good, but there's quite a bit of hope in this scenario, actually. What we have last summer, so in 2012, Everything in here bleached, and then quite a few of the coral did die. But we did manage to keep the brain corals, the fungia, and the lobophilia. So these ones stayed bone white during the whole summer. And then during winter, when the temperatures dropped, they were able to recover, and they got their really nice colour back. So it was quite nice to see that over the winter period. It seemed to be a recovery period for them, you know, a little bit of reduced stress so they can come back. This means that, you know, possibly as they go through, they'll bleach during summer, recover during winter, and they'll be able to progress. Right. What's really, really important about this scenario is we still have positive calcification. So calcification is still occurring in here. We've still got reefs being built. And that is so important for the biodiversity and the organisms that are dependent upon coral reefs. And also for the protection of our coastal zones. So that we've got that buffer between us and the ocean and all the climatic changes that come through. So here we haven't reduced our emissions at all, and we have a four degree increase in temperature. Four degrees. Four degrees, and 400 parts per million, so we're sitting about pH of 7.7. .7. So if we have a look. Wow. Yeah, it's a very common response is wow or yuck. So what happened to these ones during summer was that they bleached, and then unfortunately all our coral died. So not a single coral was able to survive these changes. Last summer, we had basically cyanobacteria, and that was pretty much it. There wasn't really any algae. During the winter period, we did get some algae coming back, but there is not a lot of diversity in here. There's no living coral within this tank. What's even more worrying about these high treatments is that we now have negative calcification. So these reefs are actually decalcifying. When corals calcify, mm -hmm. they pull in calcium and carbonate from the seawater, and they incorporate it into their skeleton and that's how they produce the reef framework. So when we have negative, what's going on is that the skeleton's actually decalcifying and releasing that calcium carbonate back into the environment. 
So rather than making a reef, the reef is slowly dissolving. So that is really not good. That means we've lost that habitat. We've lost that protection to the coastal zones. There is no calcium carbonate to make the reefs anymore. That's really frightening. That is very frightening. Um, Do you get disheartened? No. I like that one. Yeah. You know, that is still a possibility. Mm. And that's what we need to aim for, you know. This we do not want to go to. This is a warning. This is very much a warning. You know, you look in here and I don't want to see a reef like this. If they're decalcifying like that and getting weaker, mm. then when you have storm surges, cyclones and all those kind of things, it's just going to rip this reef apart. So it's probably going to be fairly rapidly lost once it gets to this stage. Yeah. I think anything we can do is a really good thing. Um, you know, just small steps to help reduce and get it down anything um, to try and push that. So, you know, if we can reduce it even 50%, that would be terrific. The amazing amount of life that is out there, you know, it's just incredible to be able to see. And with the climate change, to lose that would be such a shame. You know, it's just such an amazing place. And I have my nieces with me at the moment, and to be able to share this with her is incredible. And to think, I've also got a two-year-old niece, but she might not be able to see this, you know? It's a real big shame. Seeing that experiment was very confronting, but it also drove home the message how important it is to cut our greenhouse gas emissions quickly and deeply. The last thing we should be doing is opening up new coal mines like the ones planned for the Galilee Basin or doubling Queensland's coal exports. It would be a disaster for the Great Barrier Reef.